Thank you for watching Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman, President of American Atheists, here with a special edition of Atheist Viewpoint. Today's edition is about the Atheist-sponsored uh, monument in Stark, Florida. It's the first ever Atheist-sponsored monument on public land. It's up. It's permanent. We went down there. We had a fantastic event. Gave lots of great speeches, and over 250 atheists came to this event. It was truly monumental. The founders of our republic created this nation with the guarantee that no one in any part of our government could ever decide what religious beliefs or lack of religious beliefs should be the official doctrine of our secular nation. Separation of government from religion has kept us a free and powerful people. American Atheists is a national organization dedicated to maintaining this vital constitutional wall between church and state. Today, in the presence of the world, we again make history. Today, for the first time in American history, atheists dedicate a monument to atheism on public land with the consent and cooperation of the governing authorities. This is true Americanism, where widely different views can all be a part of the American experience in a great crucible of freedom. In acceptance of our many differences, we fulfill the visions of our founders that we are truly, despite our disagreements, one nation indivisible that we have become a union of free people, and that in our union is our strength, that we are a nation that is out of many one. <laughs> to protect these monuments is to protect the freedom for which we stand. To defile these monuments is to defile the graves of our martyrs. Let those doubters who will not accept the reality that religious belief and atheism can share the same plot of common ground come to the Bradford County Courthouse in Stark, Florida and there witness, experience, and celebrate the stark reality that our future can be better than our past and that we are and that we will continue to be a free, unified, and powerful people. Next, we have Jeanette Madet. Good afternoon. After a long drive yesterday and a wee bit of socializing last night, I had intended to sleep in this morning, and then I realized I didn't want to miss the opportunity to see this object behind me, delivered and put in place. Um, many are referring to it as the Atheist Monument. Uh, to be accurate, I believe the program says a monument to our secular nation. <laughs> but I'm 
I'm going to just quibble a little bit. It's not really just an atheist mon monument or a monument to our secular nation. It's a piece of granite with words carved in it. Not unlike what is here to my left. Um, by the way, that's not, those aren't the Ten Commandments that I grew up with. <laughs> um, but what strikes me on this occasion is the power that we ascribe to words. Words can express love, learning, comfort, but they can also destroy friendships and families. They can cost people their jobs. They can instill hatred, escalate misunderstandings, and start wars. The fact that we have some people behind us trying to drown out our words is testament to that. Yep. Fear of what we might say. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you to all the speakers who made this day happen. Thank you to all the activists who made this event happen. Good afternoon, atheists. Good afternoon, Christians. Go! Oh, look, you're in the minority. I am thrilled to be here today with you on this warm, humid, sunny day. That's what it says in this speech. It's supposed to be a sunny day. For this historic event. Now today, America's atheists take another step forward in our struggle for equality as we as a nation take a step forward towards the American ideal of a pluralistic melting pot society. Across our country, Public lands are littered with religious monuments, most notably depicting the Ten Commandments like the one beside me. Out of ignorance, most people believe the Ten Commandments to be some bland, benevolent set of ethics on which all nice people can agree. These are the people who have never read the Bible or the context in which the, the commandments are given. As our monument will remind people, the Ten Commandments are not benevolent, but barbaric. Most of the commandments are regularly ignored because are regularly ignored because they are irrelevant to modern society. Only three of the ten have any similarity to US law. But one thing almost all of the commandments have in common is the God prescribed death penalty for the many for the things many of us good moral Americans do every day. For instance, the second commandment prohibits graven images of anything that is in heaven. So I guess that's pretty bad for the Catholics who wear or display crucifixes carrying graven images of Jesus. In indeed, the fact that the Catholic Church actually removed this commandment proves that the church officials agree that this version of the Ten Commandments contradicts Catholic dogma and the penalty is death. Work on Sunday? The Old Testament says you deserve to die for your labor. And then there's Commandment 4, taking God's name in vain. God damn it, that carries the death penalty too. <laughs> the death penalty for a disrespectful child or a cheating adult or a cheating spouse commandment 10 prohibits coveting the very basis for capitalism <laughs> America itself would cease to exist if this commandment were obeyed Nearly every Christian in America mo ignores most of these commandments and they deserve to be ignored because they are mostly irrelevant and the government should not allow religious groups to promote the commandments out of a misguided allegiance to primitive pre-American morality.
But then there's the first commandment. I, the Lord, am thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Martin Luther paraphrased this commandment, I think correctly, as, Thou shalt have and worship me alone as thy God. Once again, the penalty for not observing this commandment is death by stoning. Amen. And that's where we come in, Cy. <laughs> as this is obviously our strongest objection. The demand, the demand to worship one God of one religion under penalty of death is the very essence of theocracy. Taken in context, it's the exact opposite of religious freedom, fitting the definition of hate speech as it incites prejudicial action and violence against non-adherents. And it's sitting on the courthouse lawn. The good news is that the Constitution requires all branches of the government to be fair and neutral when it comes to religious viewpoints. So atheists, thank you, so atheists nationwide are able to counter religion's morality of yesteryear with honesty, compassion, and equality. In that vein, American Atheists offers an alternative monument which tells the verifiable truth with no underlying threats at all. I hope you take a moment to look at this monument when it's when you're on your way out. It has now been unveiled. Now, when you look at this monument, the first thing you will notice is that it has a function. Atheists are about the real and the physical, so we selected to place this monument in the form of a bench. So Stark's residents can gain something they once did not have, another place to rest a bit on a sunny Florida day. <laughs> the inscriptions on the back on the bench include the one from my predecessor, Madeline Murray O'Hare, who founded American Atheist 50 years ago. Often called the most hated woman in America by those who wished her silent, Madeline demonstrates in this quote that Jeanette read, promotes one very important thing from the ten, that's missing from the Ten Commandments. Compassion. Compassion. Not so hateful at all. I am proud that 50 years after she founded American Atheists, her words of compassion are now immortalized on public grounds for the first time. Some people lie about religion's importance in the founding of this country. So we included some inscriptions of some verifiable quotes from Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, just to set the record straight. Even though some of our founding fathers were religious, they all agreed and indeed went out of their way to create a secular constitution providing a wall of separation between religion and government. The only religious decision they made was to omit God from the law of the land. <laughs> Furthermore, few people know about the Treaty of Tripoli, the country's first treaty, which was written by order of George Washington, ratified unanimously by the first founding Senate and signed into law by John Adams, which states specifically that the government of the United States is not in any sense founded in the Christian religion. This treaty, <laughs> this treaty and these quotes are not what religious historical revisionists would like you to believe. They are not indicative of people who founded a Christian nation but rather they are actions of religious and non-religious people who understood that government and religion must be kept separate for a free and diverse nation to flourish. Our 
Our message to America is clear. Atheists are everywhere, and we demand equality from our government. Of course, <coughs> of course, equality is an all or nothing prospect. So in free speech zones like this one, where religious views are promoted, all religious and non-religious positions, including atheists, Satanists, and Muslims, are allowed the same opportunity. Our message to believers is also important. Read your Bibles and your holy books. One of atheism's biggest problems is that not enough Christians read their Bibles. <laughs> That's right. You, Dave. This allows preachers to interpret the Bible's contents as they see fit yes. because very few people who own what they claim to think is the perfect word of God can't actually bring themselves to read it. It's no mystery why few believers actually read their Bibles. They are afraid that if they did, they would understand how flawed it really is. In short, in short, ignorance of their own Bibles keeps Christians Christian and empowers crooked preachers and politicians to do as they see fit in the name of God with parishioners' money without challenge. Indeed, Christians who don't read their Bibles are allowing religious freedom to be in danger, hurting themselves and their country on the whole. I urge, beg, and dare all believers everywhere to read their holy books for themselves for real. Amen. In fact, all of the speakers of today's program have signed this Bible. And I will give this Bible to any Christian who will promise to sit down with it and read it cover to cover. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today not only to unveil a new monument, but a new ongoing project for American atheists. This is not only the first permanent atheist sponsored monument on public land. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the first of many. Yeah. I am pleased to announce that thanks in part to a generous anonymous donor, we are embarking on a mission to place up to 50 monuments on public lands and Nationwide, local American atheist affiliates, some of which are represented here today, including Flash, Yay. Atheists of Florida, Woo! the SSA chapter from UCS, yeah. and our newest affiliate, the North Florida Atheists, which meets right here in Bradford County and already has 50 members. are encouraged to seek out places where the Ten Commandments or other religious propaganda are placed on public land and American atheists will work with them to ensure that the truth is placed next to the lie and civility is placed next to barbarism. In most cases we accept to accomplish this goal without substantial legal costs as we have the right to place our monuments anywhere they place theirs. And this has been confirmed by the Supreme Court, a point which even the Men's Christian Fellowship here in Florida agrees. However, we are prepared to fight any legal battles that emerge from this effort. So in the cases where local politicians are so entrenched in the bigotry business of religion that they insist on spending taxpayer dollars to preserve inequality, by refusing to allow our legal and inclusive monument, we will be ready to take legal action 
win, recover court costs from the municipalities, and place our monument there anyway. We will expose the Ten Commandments for the religious intolerance they represent and the violence and the hate they endorse, yet command. We will educate people about the true and provable secular nature of our country and highlight the lies religious leaders tell their flocks. And we will do it nationwide. Yes. Diversity, equality, democracy, true American values never mentioned in the Bible, but elemental to our great nation and required for any ethical society. Religious intolerance had a lot to do with the founding of our colonies, and it is the reason that America's founders deliberately created a secular constitution. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to re-examine Christianity to expose its nearly insignificant role in the founding of America and the framing of our Constitution and its utter lack of value in modern society. Today, today we begin to spread the truth and raise awareness of American atheists in a new way, expanding on the methods of those who wish to hide or distort the truth by using the Constitution in the way it was designed to have our say as equals in the melting pot that is America. Thank you. And thank you to our activists. Thank you, John. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Alan Beck. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Janet. Tallahassee Atheists. What? Tallahassee Atheists. And thank you to the Tallahassee Atheists that I forgot to mention. We'll be having a party over at the Days Inn next door all afternoon. There will be free food. There will be pool. There will be fun. And it will be much less humid over there. I swear to God. <laughs> Do we want to have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Sai, I'll answer you right now. I won't debate you because you're not good enough. Sai, I'll debate you and Frank Turing and a whole bunch of other people, but not you. I won't debate you because you're pain in my butt. You're trying to use me for your own publicity. Thank you for watching this edition of Atheist Viewpoint. I'm very pleased at how this event went, and I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed watching these clips. Please stay tuned for next week's episode, which is part two of the series. Until then, thank you for watching Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules.
your face shows a withered brain. Religion has driven you insane. Some want money, you want pain, but I'm not falling anymore. You ask if I'm happy, yes I am. I think for myself, I've learned to stand. Kneel if you want, I don't give a damn, but I'm Your disdain life and you're scared of hell. They've indoctrinated you quite well, but we're not falling anymore. 